The evening had been warm and buzzing with laughter, the kind of laughter that makes a house feel full. It was his 60th birthday, and the husband looked around the room, taking in the smiling faces of old friends, his grown children, and even a few new faces his wife had insisted they invite. He felt proud, though there was a subtle pang, a sense of quiet loneliness despite the crowd. His wife, radiant and confident in her crimson dress, moved around the room gracefully, conversing with everyone but him. She'd been busier than usual these last few months, he noted, a bit distracted, but he brushed it aside as a consequence of her work. At that moment, one of their friends patted him on the back. Hey, we're running low on the wine, birthday boy. Why don't you go grab a couple of bottles? He laughed and waved a hand. Of course, I should be doing the hosting. Give me a second. As he walked toward the kitchen, he felt a swell of affection for his wife. This party had been her idea, and he was grateful for her thoughtfulness, even if lately she'd seemed distant. As he approached the kitchen, the hum of the crowd faded, and a strange, quiet tension took its place. He was just about to push the door open when he heard a low voice, muffled but unmistakably his wife's. Don't worry about it. He won't come in here. He never even notices what I'm up to. She laughed, her tone almost mocking. The husband's brow furrowed, but curiosity outweighed his hesitation. He pushed the door open a crack, careful not to make a sound. His breath caught as he took in the scene. There, in the dim light of the kitchen, his wife was pressed against the counter, locked in a passionate embrace with a man he barely recognized. But after a second look, the pieces fell together. The man was her co-worker, the young man she'd been mentioning now and then, with a dismissive shrug and a casual laugh. Relax, Julia, her lover whispered, a grin spreading across his face as he ran a hand through her hair. We got time. He's probably lost in the party somewhere. Her laugh was different, a soft, secretive chuckle he hadn't heard in years. Can you believe he actually thinks I planned this party for him? Poor guy. He has no idea. The husband's hands trembled as he gripped the door frame. The rage that shot through him felt almost blinding. Yet he stood there, frozen in place, barely able to comprehend what he was witnessing. He felt his stomach twist, a nauseating mixture of betrayal and fury building within him. As if sensing his presence, his wife looked up. Her expression shifted from shock to a smug satisfaction that made his skin crawl. Oh, you're here, she said flatly, with hardly a hint of embarrassment. Really, this is hardly the time to be playing the jealous husband. Don't you have guests to entertain? Fuck off. Learn how to respect privacy of a wife who earns more than you. Her lover, who'd been watching him with a smirk, now leaned against the counter, crossing his arms. You heard her. You should probably respect her privacy. You know, as a grown woman and all that, you can't do anything you cuck, he sneered, glancing at Julia, who was already straightening her dress with a dismissive look. The husband clenched his fists, feeling his patience unraveling. He took a step forward, his voice a low, steady growl. After all we've been through, after everything I've done for you, you think you can just humiliate me like this? His wife rolled her eyes, turning away from him. Oh, please, don't start with a guilt trip. You act like you've been some great husband all these years. You can't stand the fact that I'm successful now, that I don't need you. That's what really bothers you, isn't it? His chest tightened as her words cut through him. The accusation. The indifference. She was speaking to him as if he was nothing. As if the life they'd built meant nothing. You think this is about money? He said, his voice trembling with hurt and anger. I loved you. I thought we were a team. Her lover snorted. Look, pal, whatever sad story you're about to give, save it. She's moved on. Frankly, you should too. What are you going to do about it? He stood there, feeling his rage burning through the shock, like a fire finally fed. He took another step closer, looking each of them in the eyes, forcing them to see the pain they'd inflicted. I did everything for you, he said quietly, his voice filled with a fury that made his wife's smile falter. I worked, I sacrificed, and you couldn't even show a shred of respect in return. She crossed her arms, finally showing a flash of discomfort. You act like I owe you for all that. You don't get to control me. Not anymore. Her lover laughed giving him a taunting grin. Yeah, what are you going to do, man? You're not exactly in a position to lay down rules here. 
The husband didn't back down. He let his gaze shift to his wife, searching her face for something, remorse, regret, even the faintest trace of the woman he'd married. But all he saw was coldness, a mask of confidence that barely hid her disdain. He felt something inside him snap, a final tether letting go. He straightened, giving her one last, piercing look. Fine, he said, his voice like ice. You want freedom? You can have it. But don't expect to walk away and scathe. His wife raised an eyebrow, her confidence flickering. What's that supposed to mean? The husband looked between them, a calm determination taking over. You're going to learn what it means to lose. To watch everything you've built fall apart. Her lover's smirk faded, replaced by a wariness that hadn't been there before. All right, old man, you're being a little dramatic here. Oh, you think so? The husband replied, a dangerous glint in his eye. I've spent my life building something real, something I thought was unbreakable. But it turns out I was wrong. And now, I'm going to make sure you understand what real loss feels like. His wife shifted, looking genuinely rattled for the first time. Don't be ridiculous. You're acting like a child. You can't. I can. He interrupted his voice firm. You've forgotten who you're dealing with. You think I'm weak? That I'll just roll over and accept this? Watch me. The room felt colder as he stood there, resolute. He had reached a breaking point, and nothing, not his wife's shock, nor her lover's smugness, could shake him from the decision he'd just made. He could feel the power returning to him, the self-respect he'd thought he'd lost finally resurfacing. The husband took a shaky breath. His voice wavered, but he forced himself to speak, letting each word hang in the air. I never expected this from you, he said, struggling to keep his voice steady. After everything we built together, his wife's gaze hardened. She crossed her arms, her expression defiant. Please don't act so surprised. When was the last time you felt like a real man anyway? Her words were sharp, meant to wound, and they did. He felt a pang, one that reached deep into the core of him, bringing to the surface all the doubts he'd ignored, all the sacrifices he'd made over the years. He tried to steady himself, to remember the life they'd shared, the good years, the times he'd thought she was his partner, his confidant. But now, all of that felt like an illusion. And as he looked at her, he saw someone who barely resembled the woman he'd loved. The lover chuckled, breaking the silence. Look, buddy, he sneered. You're not in control anymore. She's done with you. Get over it. He leaned in closer, as if taunting him. She needs a real man now. One who can give her what she wants. A surge of anger shot through the husband, erasing the last shreds of disbelief and hurt. He clenched his fists, his knuckles white as he fought to contain himself. He took a step forward, meeting his wife's cold gaze, and for a brief moment, he saw a flicker of unease. Is this really what you want? He asked, his voice rough. To throw everything away? To humiliate me in our own home? She raised an eyebrow, her tone dismissive. Maybe I don't want to pretend anymore. I'm tired of pretending you're enough, that you're still relevant. You wouldn't understand, anyway. You've been living in some dream where you think I'm happy. His hands shook as he listened, each word cutting deeper than the last. He wanted to shout, to rage, but he could feel that his anger was different now, sharper, colder, no longer just a reaction, but something he could use. He forced himself to look at her lover, who was grinning, clearly enjoying the husband's pain. Who do you think you are? He said, his voice low and controlled. You think you've taken something from me? That you've won somehow? All you've done is expose the truth. The lover's grin faltered, just for a second. He shrugged, his bravado slipping, but he covered it quickly. I don't need to prove anything to you, he said, but the words sounded less certain now. Maybe not, the husband replied, holding his gaze. But let me be clear, you're a footnote, nothing more. Whatever you think you're taking from me, you'll find it comes with a cost. His wife scoffed, rolling her eyes. Oh, stop being dramatic. You think you can control everything, but it's over. I don't owe you anything, and I'm done pretending otherwise. He let out a bitter laugh, unable to stop himself. Is that really what you believe? That none of this meant anything? That I meant nothing? She looked away, but only for a moment. And when she spoke again, her tone was flat, final. Yes, 
I'm not going to keep lying to make you feel better. The hurt in his chest deepened, but so did his resolve. He took a step back, giving himself a moment to collect his thoughts. He'd spent years dismissing the small signs, ignoring the late nights, the distant look in her eyes. He justified them to himself, convinced that she was just stressed, that she'd come back to him when things calmed down. But now, all of that denial felt like a waste. All the excuses, the patience, it had only delayed the truth. She'd been gone for a long time, and he'd just been too blind to see it. All right, he said slowly, his voice steady now. If that's how you feel, then I won't stop you. You want freedom? Fine. But don't think you'll get it without consequences. His wife's expression flickered, just for a moment, and he saw a flash of uncertainty. What's that supposed to mean? She demanded, her tone sharper than before. He met her gaze, letting her see the resolve in his eyes. You've taken me for granted. You've used me, disrespected me, and now you think you can just walk away without a second thought. But you're wrong. You're not going to forget what you've done, and you're not going to forget me. Her lover, visibly irritated, rolled his eyes. This is pathetic. Just let it go, man. Move on. The husband turned to him, a new sense of calm settling over him. Don't worry, he said quietly, his tone dark and certain. I'm letting go, but I'm not moving on empty-handed. I'm taking back everything that belongs to me, everything I worked for. He saw a flicker of fear cross his wife's face, quickly hidden. She tried to keep her voice steady. You're being ridiculous. You can't control what I do. Oh, I don't want to control you, he replied, his voice smooth. I just want to make sure you understand what it feels like to lose, to feel helpless, to watch everything slip away. Her lover, clearly frustrated, glared at him. Enough with the threats. We're done here. The husband shook his head. No, we're not done. I'm done pretending, just like you. But I'm going to make sure that this little fantasy of yours doesn't come without consequences. He turned his gaze back to his wife, the woman who'd once been his partner, his love. He let the silence linger, giving her one last chance to speak, to say something, anything, that might make him believe there was still a trace of the woman he'd married. But her silence only confirmed what he already knew. He took a steadying breath, then spoke, his voice calm resolved. I gave you everything. My trust, my loyalty. I thought that would be enough. Clearly, I was wrong. She looked away, her jaw tight, refusing to meet his gaze. Her lover scoffed again, muttering something under his breath, but the husband didn't care. He'd wasted enough time on them already. Without another word, he turned and walked out of the kitchen, his footsteps firm and unhurried. He felt their eyes on him as he left, but he didn't look back. He had given them everything he had, and now he was taking it all back, reclaiming the parts of himself he'd given so freely, so willingly. As he walked away, he felt something shift inside him, a strange sense of clarity settling over him. He knew what he had to do, and he knew he'd follow through. Later that night, as the last guests were leaving, his old friend Vincent caught his arm, frowning slightly. Hey, are you alright? You don't seem like yourself tonight. The husband forced a smile, masking the turmoil beneath. I'm better than ever, Vincent. It's time I put myself first for a change. Vincent gave him a curious look, pausing. If you say so, just remember, don't do anything you'll regret. Sometimes it's best to take a step back and let things settle. The husband nodded, but in his mind, there was no room for hesitation. This was his life being torn apart by betrayal, and he couldn't just sit back and accept it. When the last guest had left and the house was finally quiet, he went up to his study and sat at his desk. The anger, the betrayal, it was all simmering inside him, but he knew he had to channel it carefully. He pulled out a notepad, opened his laptop, and began writing. He jotted down every memory of her late nights, every unexplained expense, every moment that had once seemed innocent. Now he could see clearly... The next day, he made his first move, starting with a visit to a lawyer's office. The lawyer, a sharp, no-nonsense woman named Lisa, greeted him with a firm handshake. She sat across from him, listening intently as he laid out his story in clipped, controlled sentences. Her eyes didn't waver as he spoke, but when he finished, she nodded slowly. 
Infidelity is a strong ground for a divorce, she said, her voice steady. But if you're planning to protect your assets, it's best to act carefully. He nodded, feeling the reassurance of her calm demeanor. I want to make sure she doesn't walk away with anything that belongs to me. Lisa leaned back in her chair, considering. We'll start by securing the finances. We can legally protect what's yours, but we need evidence of her infidelity and any financial misconduct. She held his gaze. This will require patience. He clenched his jaw but nodded. I have patience. I've had it for years. Lisa nodded approvingly. Good. We'll begin by transferring certain assets, shifting funds, and placing some investments in trusts. I'll guide you through the details. He spent the next few hours in her office, combing through financial records, authorizing transfers, and making sure everything was in place. When he finally left, he felt the weight of the decision settle over him, but there was also a strange sense of satisfaction. Over the next few days, he quietly began collecting the pieces of evidence he'd need. He found emails exchanged between his wife and her lover, brief and carefully worded, but enough to show a connection. He took screenshots, saved them to a secure drive, and filed away each piece of proof with a quiet satisfaction. One evening, as he sat in his study, his phone buzzed. It was a message from his wife. Asterisk, I'll be working late tonight. Asterisk, he smirked. Working late? Huh, he muttered to himself. He knew exactly where she'd be, meeting her lover in some bar, hiding in plain sight. He could have confronted her, called her out immediately, but he had a different plan. The next day, he reached out to a private investigator, someone recommended by Lisa, a discreet, middle-aged man named Frank who promised thorough work. Frank listened quietly as the husband explained his situation, then gave a small nod. You want proof, Mr. Dawson? Frank asked, his expression calm. I'll get you proof. Within days, Frank's reports started coming in. Photos, timestamps, hotel bookings. The husband stared at the images each one a bitter reminder of his wife's betrayal. But he felt something else too, a sense of purpose. This was no longer about the pain she'd caused him. It was about ensuring she'd face the consequences. Meanwhile, he made a point of keeping up appearances at home. He still cooked breakfast each morning, still greeted her with a polite nod. Though her glances were now wary, uncertain. She could sense a change, he knew, but she didn't yet know the extent of it. One afternoon, as he sat at the local cafe, nursing a cup of coffee, Vincent showed up, sitting down across from him, without a word. Are you doing all right? Vincent asked, looking at him closely. I've known you long enough to know when something's off. He forced a chuckle. Everything's under control, Vincent. Vincent leaned in, lowering his voice. Look, I don't know what's going on, but revenge can be a dark path. Just make sure you're thinking clearly. The husband smiled though it didn't reach his eyes. Don't worry. I'm seeing things more clearly now than I have in years. Vincent watched him for a moment, concern etched in his face, but he nodded, patting his friend on the shoulder. Just don't lose yourself in this. As Vincent left, the husband felt a pang of doubt, but he quickly brushed it aside. He had lost himself long ago, in a marriage that had been hollowed out by lies. Now he was finally finding his way back. Over the next few days, he took the final steps. He met with accountants, reviewed every shared asset, and made sure that each piece of property and every account was secured. He transferred funds into accounts only he could access, set up trusts, and ensured that his wife's access was gradually limited. By the time she would realize it would be too late. One evening, his wife approached him in the kitchen, watching him as he poured himself a glass of wine. She hesitated, then spoke, her tone casual but with an edge of suspicion. You've been awfully busy lately. Everything okay? He looked at her, keeping his expression calm. Everything's fine. Just taking care of a few things. She frowned, clearly sensing the shift. You don't need to do anything drastic, you know? Whatever you think is happening. Oh, I know exactly what's happening. He interrupted his voice calm. And trust me, I'm handling it. She stared at him her expression shifting from suspicion to irritation. I don't know what's gotten into you lately, but it's starting to get odd. Is it? He replied, meeting her gaze. Maybe you just never really knew me. She didn't respond, but he could see the flash of uncertainty in her eyes. She turned and left the room without another word, 
and he took a slow sip of his wine, feeling the cold satisfaction of having the upper hand. The pieces were finally coming together. He knew that in a matter of days, everything would be set. And when it was, there would be no going back for her or for him. That night, as he lay in bed, he found himself staring at the ceiling, a strange calm settling over him. The plans were in motion, each piece meticulously arranged. He'd built his life with her, and now he would dismantle it, brick by brick, leaving her to see just how much she'd taken for granted. The thought of it filled him not with joy, but with a grim sense of justice. It wasn't just about revenge. It was about reclaiming what had been his, about forcing her to face the consequences she'd so carelessly ignored. And as he drifted off to sleep, he felt, for the first time in months, a quiet sense of peace. He had taken control, and nothing, not her lies, not her betrayal, could shake him now. It started with a late-night message alert. His wife sat up in bed, her phone casting a dim glow as she scrolled through her banking app, her frown deepening. She tapped the screen a few times, her expression shifting from mild confusion to mounting panic. What? She muttered, her voice a harsh whisper. She glanced over at him, still in the bed next to her, sleeping soundly. Or so she thought. In the morning, over breakfast, she tried to act normal. But he noticed the tightness in her jaw, the way her fingers tapped anxiously on her phone. She glanced at him, clearing her throat, but hesitated before saying anything. He kept his face neutral, taking a slow sip of coffee, pretending to read the newspaper. Later that day, he heard her speaking in a strained voice on the phone, probably to her lover. She kept her tone low, but her words carried through the house, sharp and anxious. I don't know what happened, okay? The accounts just know I didn't transfer anything. I don't know why there's a hold on my card, either. She hissed, frustration clear in every word. The next morning, she cornered him in the kitchen. Did you mess with the accounts? She demanded, her voice tight with barely controlled anger. He looked up from his coffee calmly meeting her glare. Mess with the accounts? He repeated his tone deliberately casual. I'm just handling finances appropriately. She stared at him, her face twisting in frustration. What does that mean, appropriately? My account is nearly empty and my card was declined. What are you doing? He set his coffee cup down, keeping his tone calm. Just transferring what's mine. A transfer of respect, you could say. Her eyes widened her face flushing with anger. Respect, she spat. You're out of your mind. That money's ours. You can't just take it. He let a small smirk play at the corners of his mouth, enjoying her frustration. Funny, he said slowly. I thought you didn't believe I had any right to what's yours. Isn't that what you told me? Her face darkened, and she took a step closer, her hands clenched. You're gonna fix this right now? He shrugged, his voice calm and detached. Fix what exactly? I'm simply making sure I have control over what belongs to me. After all, you've been clear about the way you see things. She stared at him, her mouth opening and closing as she struggled for words. This isn't funny, she hissed. You know I need that money. You can't just take it away. Oh, I think I can, he replied smoothly. In fact, I already have. She stormed out, grabbing her phone and frantically calling the bank. He listened to her conversation, heard the frustration in her voice as the representative explained that the funds were legally his, that he had authorization. Each frustrated gasp, every attempt she made to regain control, was met with a calm, unyielding refusal. Over the next few days, her panic grew. Every time she checked her account, she found the balance lower than the last time. Credit cards were declined and automatic payments began to bounce back. One evening, her lover arrived at the house unannounced, his face set in an irritated frown. What's going on? He demanded as she opened the door, glancing nervously at her husband, who was sitting at the dining table, watching them both with quiet amusement. The lover walked past her, crossing his arms as he faced the husband. I don't know what kind of game you're playing, but she needs her money. We have plans, and you don't get to ruin them. The husband tilted his head slightly, as though considering his words. Plans? I think your plans were made on the assumption of certain resources. He leaned back, a faint smile on his face. Perhaps you should rethink them. The lover's face flushed with anger. You can't just cut her off. 
She's worked hard for that money, and you know it. Oh, she's worked for it, all right, he replied, his tone cold. And she's reaping exactly what she's earned. The wife's face was red, a mixture of anger and desperation, her voice rising. This is petty and childish. If you think you're hurting me, you're wrong. You're just making a fool of yourself. The husband shrugged, unbothered. A fool, perhaps. But a fool who isn't funding your little escapades anymore. She took a shaky breath, trying to steady herself. Do you really think this will stop me? She sneered. I don't need you or your money. He raised an eyebrow, his expression cool. Then I suppose this shouldn't be a problem for you, should it? Her lover shot him a glare, stepping closer, his tone growing more aggressive. You're nothing but a sad, pathetic old man. Let her go, give her what she needs, and stop pretending you're still relevant in her life. The husband held his gaze, unflinching. You're very bold, he said quietly. But I think you'll find that without my support, things won't be quite so comfortable. I wonder how much she'll enjoy this new life of freedom when she realizes how much it costs. The lover rolled his eyes, turning to the wife. We don't need this. Let's go. He tugged at her arm, but she pulled back, hesitating, looking from him to her husband. The husband watched her, noting the moment of hesitation. Go ahead, he said, his voice almost bored. Walk away. Enjoy your independence. She glared at him, but the expression in her eyes wavered. This isn't over, she spat. But even as she said it, he could see the uncertainty growing in her gaze. The next day, her frantic calls continued, her voice rising each time she called him, demanding explanations, begging, finally even pleading. But he remained firm, calm. Her words, once dismissive, now returned to her in her own voice, a bitter echo of the arrogance she displayed only days before. Eventually, she tried to bargain, her voice shaky but determined. You don't have to do this. You can, we can talk this through. Just give me access to what I need, and we can figure something out? He shook his head. There's nothing to figure out. You wanted your freedom. You have it. Her lover, too, was beginning to feel the strain. He called less frequently, his voice turning cold, irritated. The once-friendly text dwindled, and one night, the husband heard the two of them arguing in hushed voices, their words harsh and angry. He could hear her lover's frustration, the blame seeping into his words. You said you could handle this, her lover snapped, his voice a low growl. What am I supposed to do if you don't have the money? You think I wanted this? She hissed back, her voice laced with desperation. You think I planned for any of this? The lover scoffed, his voice dripping with contempt. Maybe you should have thought about it before dragging me into this mess. When the argument finally ended, he heard her retreating to their shared bedroom, her footsteps heavy and defeated. She didn't speak to him that night and he simply lay there, listening to the quiet, to the tension that had replaced the arrogance that once filled her every word. As the days passed, the consequences of his actions became undeniable. Her lifestyle, the security she'd taken for granted, all of it was slipping away. Friends stopped calling, uncertain of the turmoil they sensed, and her lover's presence grew increasingly sporadic. One morning, she confronted him again, her voice hoarse, her eyes dark with exhaustion. This is enough, she pleaded, the anger finally giving way to something softer, almost desperate. You've made your point. Can we please just stop this? He looked at her, his face unreadable. Stop? You wanted freedom. You got it. She swallowed, her gaze dropping. I just, I didn't think it would be like this. For a long moment, he said nothing, simply watching her. And then, he turned away, his voice calm. Think of this as a lesson, he said quietly. Actions have consequences. And with that, he walked away, leaving her standing in the kitchen, alone with the realization that everything she'd thought she could control had slipped out of her grasp. It was a rainy evening when she finally broke. He was seated in the living room, flipping through a newspaper, half listening to the soft patter of raindrops against the windows. She approached him hesitantly, her face pale and drawn. She'd been retreating into herself more each day, her energy and confidence drained by the mess she'd created. Now, she stood before him, her expression pleading. Honey, she began, her voice trembling. Can we, can we talk? 
He glanced up, expression neutral. I think you've said enough. Or would you like to add something new to all the things you hid from me? She flinched, her hands ringing together as she struggled to keep eye contact. Please, just hear me out, she whispered. I, I know I made a mistake. A terrible mistake. A mistake, he replied, raising an eyebrow. That's interesting. I thought mistakes were accidents. Yours was a deliberate choice. Over and over. Tears filled her eyes as she nodded, wiping at them hastily. You're right. I'm not trying to excuse it. I don't have any excuses. I was wrong. I, I thought I wanted something else, but I didn't see what I was throwing away. I was stupid, selfish. Selfish, he repeated, a trace of bitterness in his voice. That much is true. She took a shaky breath, struggling to keep her composure. But I can change, she pleaded, her voice breaking. Please, just give me a chance. I'm so sorry. I'll do anything to make this right. He looked at her for a long moment, studying her face, the desperation in her eyes, the slight trembling of her hands. But he felt nothing. There was no warmth left, no sympathy. Make it right, he said slowly, leaning back in his chair. How exactly do you intend to do that? Because I think you'll find that some things can't just be erased. Her lip trembled, and she clutched her hands together, as if searching for words. I, I could go to counseling. We could work on this together. I know you don't trust me, but I'll do whatever it takes to earn that trust back. Just, just don't throw us away. He let out a humorless chuckle. Throw us away? He repeated. Funny, you seem more than willing to do that yourself. So, now that everything's fallen apart, you come crawling back, hoping for some miracle that I'll just forgive you. She choked back a sob, nodding, her voice barely a whisper. Yes, I know it's a lot to ask, but please just let me try. I'll do anything. I need you. He stared at her, feeling the coldness of his own words. Need me? He said, tilting his head. I don't think you understand what need really means. When I needed respect, you mocked me. When I needed loyalty, you threw me aside. She was sobbing openly now, her hands covering her face as she sank onto the couch beside him. I know. I was so wrong. I know I was. I'll spend the rest of my life making it up to you. Just tell me what to do. For a moment, he considered it. Part of him wanted to let her suffer, to drag out this moment of regret. But as he looked at her, he felt nothing but emptiness. I don't want anything from you, he said finally, his voice steady. I don't want your apologies, your promises, or your guilt. You made your choices, and now you can live with them. She looked at him, horrified, reaching out as if to touch him. Please, you don't mean that. I love you. He pulled back, shaking his head. Love? Don't insult me. You only love what you've lost. And you've lost me. She broke into sobs again, clutching her knees as she sat on the edge of the couch, her voice desperate. Please, I was stupid. I see that now. He was just, he wasn't anything, I swear. I threw it all away, for nothing, I know that. He crossed his arms, watching her without pity. You didn't just throw it away. You crushed it, humiliated me and treated our marriage like something disposable. Do you understand that? She nodded frantically, tears streaming down her face. I know, I know. But if I could take it back, I would. I'm begging you, please. I'll do whatever you want. His gaze hardened. What I want is for you to understand what it feels like to be dismissed, disrespected, humiliated. That's what I want. She shook her head, reaching out, grabbing his hand. I'll prove it to you. Just give me time. He pulled his hand back, his voice cold. Time? Time to what? To string me along? Like you did before? I'm done with waiting for you to change. Done believing in empty promises. A flicker of anger flashed in her eyes, quickly replaced by desperation. So that's it then? You're just gonna walk away? He shrugged, feeling a surprising sense of peace. You already walked away? Remember? I'm just catching up. She opened her mouth to respond then seemed to realize there was nothing left to say. Her shoulders slumped, and she looked at him, defeated. But, what will I do? She whispered, more to herself than to him. What am I supposed to do without you? He stood up, straightening his jacket, his gaze steady. That's for you to figure out. Maybe now you'll realize just how much you threw away. As he turned to leave the room, she grabbed his arm, her fingers clutching at him. 
her voice breaking with desperation. Please, just one more chance. I'll make it right. He looked down at her hand, gently but firmly pulling his arm free. There's no making it right, he said quietly. Only moving forward. I'm going to do that, with or without you. And with that, he left her there, her sobs echoing through the room as he walked away. The weeks that followed his decision were surprisingly calm. For the first time in years, he felt no weight bearing down on him, no nagging doubts or frustrations simmering under the surface. The silence in his home was not loneliness. It was peace. One Saturday afternoon, he met up with his old friend, Mike, at their usual spot, a small, unassuming coffee shop downtown. As they settled in, Mike took a good look at him, a knowing smile spreading across his face. You seem different, Mike said, leaning back in his chair. In a good way. I haven't seen you like this in years. The husband smiled, running his hand along the edge of his coffee cup. I guess I didn't realize how much I'd been holding on to. It's strange, really. The second I let it all go, I felt lighter. Mike chuckled, shaking his head. You don't look like the same guy I saw at your party that night. I remember thinking, he looks like he's carrying the world on his shoulders. Now it's like you're finally free. He nodded, feeling a small thrill at those words. I am. Free, I mean. Free from everything that kept me tied to a life that wasn't mine anymore. You don't realize how much space resentment takes up in your head until you decide to let it go. They sat in comfortable silence for a moment, watching the other patrons bustle about. A mother with her young daughter ordered pastries, while a couple laughed over coffee at a nearby table. It was simple, yet filled him with a quiet happiness he hadn't felt in years. So, what's next for you? Mike asked, raising his eyebrow. Got any grand plans now that you're officially a free man? The husband laughed. Not grand, no, but I've started doing things I used to enjoy. Painting, reading more. Sign up for a cooking class. Mike raised his eyebrows, grinning. A cooking class? Didn't think I'd live to see the day. You hate cooking. Not anymore. Turns out I only hated cooking when it felt like an obligation. Now it's, it's something I can do for myself. He paused a little self-conscious. It feels good to create something from scratch. Mike gave him a nod of approval, clinking his coffee cup against his. Well, here's to new beginnings. A few weeks later, during one of his cooking classes, he found himself seated next to a woman named Emily. She was in her mid-fifties, with kind eyes and an easy laugh. They began chatting as they prepared a dish together, sharing stories and laughing at their culinary missteps. You're pretty good at this, she teased, watching as he chopped vegetables with surprising skill. He chuckled, shrugging modestly. I'm learning. Only recently started cooking, believe it or not. Really? You seem like a natural, she replied, smiling warmly. I've been coming to these classes for a year now, and I'm still a mess in the kitchen. Guess it's proof that practice doesn't always make perfect. They shared a laugh, and he felt something shift inside him, a feeling he hadn't experienced in a long time. It wasn't love at first sight but it was a spark of gentle curiosity. Over the following weeks, they continued to meet at class, their conversations becoming more comfortable, their laughs shared more frequently. They'd often stay after the session ended, cleaning up together and chatting about their lives. One evening, after they finished their class and were wiping down the counters, Emily turned to him with a soft smile. I've really enjoyed our time together, she said, her voice gentle. It's been a long time since I felt so connected to someone. He felt a warmth in his chest, a sense of ease he hadn't known in years. I feel the same, he admitted. It's surprising in a good way. I didn't think I'd be here starting something new. Emily smiled. Sometimes life takes us down a path we don't expect, and we find things we didn't even know we were looking for. As their friendship grew, they began to spend more time together outside of class. They'd go for long walks in the park, sharing stories about their pasts, their dreams, and their small joys. They even took a weekend trip to the countryside, hiking and enjoying the peace of nature. One evening, as they strolled by a small lake, she looked over at him, her eyes thoughtful. Can I ask you something? Of course, he replied as curiosity peaked. She hesitated for a moment, then spoke. I know you've been through a lot. I can see it in the way you carry yourself sometimes. 
And I want you to know that whatever you need, whether it's time or space or just friendship, I'm here. He looked at her, feeling a deep gratitude. Thank you. I don't think I could have heard that from anyone else. You're right. I've been through some things. But with you, I feel like I can finally be myself again. They stood there for a while, looking out at the lake as the sun began to set. He felt a quiet contentment settle over him, a peace that had been missing for too long. Emily reached for his hand, giving it a gentle squeeze, and he squeezed back, feeling the warmth of a genuine connection. Months passed, and as their bond deepened, he found himself slowly letting go of the past, the anger, and the pain that had once consumed him. He no longer thought about the betrayal that had shattered his marriage. Instead, he focused on the moments of joy, the laughter he shared with Emily, the excitement of learning something new. One day, Mike called him up, suggesting they meet for a drink. When he arrived, Mike took one look at him and laughed, shaking his head. You look like a different man, Mike said, raising his glass. I don't know what's changed, but I like it. He smiled, raising his glass in return. It's Emily. She's changed everything for me. It's not just love. It's, it's respect and kindness and honesty. I never realized how much I was missing until I found it with her. Mike clinked his glass against his friends. To love, then, the real kind. Over time, he and Emily continued to build a life together. They didn't rush anything. They savored each moment, letting things unfold naturally. He'd wake up in the mornings smiling at the thought of seeing her, spending time with her, and creating new memories. One evening, as they sat together on his porch, watching the sun dip below the horizon, she rested her head on his shoulder, letting out a contented sigh. Thank you for letting me be part of this new beginning, she whispered. He put his arm around her, pulling her close. No, thank you, he replied softly, for showing me that I could start again. With Emily by his side, he found a sense of fulfillment he'd long thought impossible. It wasn't just a new beginning. It was a new chapter in his life, filled with hope and joy. He'd reclaimed his life leaving behind the pain, the bitterness, and the memories that had once haunted him. As the night settled around them, he realized that he hadn't just moved on from his past, he'd grown from it. And now, he was ready to embrace whatever the future had in store. The encounter happened unexpectedly one cool autumn afternoon. He'd been out walking in the city park, lost in the rhythm of the crunching leaves underfoot, enjoying the crisp air that signaled the change of seasons. He felt a lightness in his step, a quiet joy that had taken root in the years since he'd rebuilt his life. As he rounded a corner by the lake, he stopped abruptly. There she was, standing a short distance away, bundled in a thick coat, looking out over the water. Her hair was pulled back, but it lacked its former shine, and her face looked tired and worn. She was nearly unrecognizable, a shadow of the vibrant, confident woman he'd once known. For a moment, he thought of turning back, but something in her gaze caught his eye. She had spotted him, and as she did, he saw a flicker of something in her eyes, remorse, maybe, or simply recognition of how much had changed. He took a deep breath, then slowly approached her. She looked up as he came closer, her lips parting in a small, hesitant smile. Hello, she said softly. Her voice was quieter than he remembered, lacking the edge that used to be there. Hello. He replied, keeping his tone neutral. They stood in silence for a moment, both uncertain of how to begin. Finally, she broke the quiet, her gaze shifting down to her hands, which she was twisting nervously. I, I didn't think I'd see you here, she said, a hint of nervousness in her voice. But I guess it was bound to happen eventually. He nodded, not offering much in response. There was a time when he would have been flooded with anger and resentment at the sight of her. Now, he felt only a quiet indifference. How, how have you been? She asked, glancing up at him with eyes that looked older, worn down. I'm doing well. He replied simply, with a calmness that surprised even him. Really well, actually? She nodded, a sadness flickering across her face. I can see that. You look different. Happier. I am, he said, feeling the truth of those words resonate within him. Life has been good to me. A heavy silence hung between them, and she swallowed, her voice catching slightly. I wanted to say, 
I'm sorry. For everything. For the things I said. The way I treated you. She paused, glancing at him, then looking away. I lost so much. More than I ever imagined I could. If I could go back, I'd... I'd do everything differently. He looked at her, the weight of her words sinking in. A few years ago, this apology might have meant something to him. He might have waited his entire life for it. But now, it felt almost irrelevant. I'm glad you can see that now, he replied, his tone steady but without warmth. But the past is the past. We both made choices, and we both have to live with them. She seemed to shrink at his words, her shoulders hunching slightly as she nodded. I know. Believe me, I know. She looked up, her expression pained. I've been living with my choices every day. It's hard. Everything, everything feels empty. He watched her, noting the faint hollowness in her voice, the way her gaze seemed to drift into the distance. She looked lost, and for a brief moment, he felt a flicker of sympathy. But he reminded himself that she had chosen this path, that she had built her own walls and now had to live within them. There was a time, he said, his voice quiet but firm, when I thought you were everything I wanted. But you showed me who you really were, and it forced me to see who I could be without you. He paused, glancing around the park, the trees, the lake, everything that felt so much more meaningful now. And now, I'm grateful. Because losing you helped me find something I thought I'd lost forever myself. She looked at him, her eyes filling with tears as she nodded slowly, seeming to take in the depth of his words. I'm so sorry, she whispered. I hurt you in ways I can't even understand. And I've paid for it every day since. I hope you find peace with it, he replied, his tone softening just slightly. Everyone deserves a chance to heal even if we can't go back. She looked down, nodding again, wiping at her eyes. I thought I was so smart back then, so sure of everything. She let out a shaky breath. But I was wrong. I took you for granted, thought I could have it all, and I ended up with nothing. He nodded, understanding now that nothing he could say would change her pain or ease her regrets. She had chosen this life, and now she had to walk it alone. A small, Sad smile touched her lips as she looked back at him. Thank you for listening, for letting me say all of this. I know it doesn't change anything, but it's, it's something I needed to do. He gave her a nod, acknowledging her words without offering more. Take care of yourself, he said finally. I wish you well. She nodded, swallowing hard, her eyes filled with a mix of regret and longing. Goodbye, she whispered, her voice barely audible. With a final nod, he turned and walked away, feeling a strange lightness with each step he took. The past no longer held him. He was free from the weight of her betrayal, the bitterness that had once filled his heart. As he walked further, he felt a calm peace settle over him, a sense that this chapter was truly, finally closed. He didn't look back. He didn't need to.